Water is a fundamental but fragile common resource that's been increasingly depleted and polluted by human activity. We water the plants using water contaminated with nitrates and other pesticides. We just accept it. Pesticides like chlorothalonil. For several months now, traces of it, known as metabolites, have been detected in drinking water all over France, despite the pesticide being banned since 2020. I'm pregnant. Will I be able to give my future daughter tap water? How is France's most strictly controlled consumable now proven to be so polluted? We even find chlorothalonil in Avion water, and that's supposed to be the purest water recommended for children. The Loire Atlantique in the west of France is known as the French vegetable garden. The soil here is sandy and water is plentiful. Vegetable crops are grown in greenhouses and in the open air. The problem is that this intensive vegetable farming is polluting ground and surface water. We're getting less and less rain as time passes. There must be pollutants in the tomatoes and strawberries. We just accept it. This retired couple drink the water from their well and the tap. Joël is a member of a consumer protection association and monitors the pollution levels of these two waters. I wouldn't recommend well water to a pregnant woman because with nitrate levels even below 40 or 50 milligrams, we've seen a significant number of cancers in children. Joël has access to detailed information from their water provider, Atlantico. Its vice president, Michael Derangeon, is in charge of sanitary issues. He's been following the health impacts of metabolites since 2016 and was one of the first to warn of their presence in drinking water in levels well above the norm. It's crazy to think that all of these homes can't drink the water that's pumped here, that we have to go and get it 40 kilometers away and treat it, because the water here is so polluted that even after mixing, there are still molecules that we don't recognize, and we don't know what impact these molecules have on human health. Using sophisticated analysis methods, Atlantico has found up to 470 molecules in its wells. Be it pesticides, traces of medicines, basically any human activity is found in water. To date, I don't know of any water that isn't in some way contaminated. The contamination is quite widespread, and that's why we use water purification treatments to ensure that it's safe to drink. Users of pesticides are under no legal obligation to disclose what they're spraying. To identify them, Atlantico tests its treated water on living organisms, bacteria, yeast, and even human cells. When it's green, it's fine, but when it's red, it's bad. All the fungi are dead, even from the treated water. And so we're now trying to find the names of the molecules that could explain this toxic effect. This, for instance, was a metabolite that wasn't detected by conventional monitoring. In 2020, the French National Health and Safety Agency, ANSES, launched a study into the presence of this metabolite at 300 locations across France. It took the agency three years to reveal that the metabolite was detected in more than 50% of treated water in France. At all the measuring points, chlorothalonil was found on a massive scale at the beginning of 2020. By 2023, the regional health authorities had still not informed us, the water producers, of the presence of these molecules. Chlorothalonil is now banned in Europe because it's both highly toxic to the environment and a suspected carcinogen. Its producer, the agrochemical group Sagenta, has now proved that this molecule is not a health hazard. It's really a scandal. We're effectively asking the producer of this molecule that's massively contaminating water and for which there could be colossal cleanup costs to self-certify. In Cuyon, in the Vienne department, chlorothalonil levels exceeded not only the quality threshold of one microgram per litre, but also the health threshold of three micrograms per litre. For the first time in France, water boreholes had to be closed. It's obviously a radical and tough decision because it sends out quite a serious warning about the decline in water quality, but it was the only real option. 
severe water restrictions had to be put in place. In the middle of a drought, this came as a shock to farmers like Jean. Two thirds of his farm is managed using conventional methods and the other third is organic. A few years ago, I started farming organically. My plan was to continue the transition and increase the area of organically farmed land. But given the current situation, I'm thinking of going back to conventional farming after the harvest because with no irrigation, there can be no organic farming. It's just not possible. In France, most farmers still depend on pesticides as a surefire method. But attitudes are shifting with regards to how dangerous they are. We can't deny that farmers are responsible for the levels of chlorothalonil because we're the ones using it. It's something which affects us because we don't want to pollute the water. We don't want to poison people. We work with a product that is accepted by the authorities and that's sold by the cooperatives. So we trust it. The widespread presence of metabolites in French water is a disaster for water providers. Large, densely populated areas such as the Paris region are particularly hard hit. Sedif, the Ile-de-France Water Authority, confirms that 97% of its sources, the Seine, the Marne and the Oise, are contaminated. We're on the banks of the Oise, which feeds the water treatment plant to produce drinking water. Traces of chlorothalonil have been found at levels of between 0.3 and 0.5 micrograms per liter, which is above the quality limit for drinking water. So it appears the conventional treatment methods aren't very effective in treating this metabolite. This means that a huge proportion of French people drink water that does not comply with regulations. Three quarters of Sadif's four million users in the Paris region receive water that exceeds the metabolite threshold. Only their treatment facility in mairie sur oise is capable of removing them, thanks to membrane nanofiltration technology. In these tubes, there's a membrane, which we call a spiral membrane. There are holes that are 10,000 to 100,000 times smaller than the thickness of a human hair. So all the molecules that are larger than these holes, like chlorothalonil, will not get through. Membranes are currently the only technique that can prevent them efficiently. We're talking about over 90% reduction. Sadif plans to install this technology, the only one of its kind in Europe, in its other plants. But the project is controversial with residents, local councillors and associations. Not just because of the pollution involved, but also because of the knock-on increase in the plant's electricity and water consumption. Le projet, il est estimé à 870 millions d'euros, ce qui va représenter un impact de 3 à 4 euros par foyer par mois. In France, any industrial project costing over 300 million euros has to be put to a public debate. Its aim is to inform, consult and answer questions. We're the ones who are going to pay for the pollution, for which we are in no way responsible. And Sedif, they tell us, don't worry, we'll take care of it. No way, it's not right. Those who pollute must pay, and pollution must be prevented in the first place. Sadif's vice president says that ANSES may be forced to raise current tolerance thresholds in order to bring the water back in line with standards. And it wouldn't be the first time. When the authorities found that a third of municipalities had water that didn't comply, all they did was move the benchmark so that the water complied again. Do you think that's right? No, but it's already been done twice. The debate hasn't reassured everyone. On a trop l'habitude. We are used to thinking that water is safe to drink. And now we realize that, in fact, pretty much every citizen has been polluted from the roots of their hair to their toenails with pesticides, etc. This opponent sees it as a license to pollute, since everything that's filtered is then discharged back into the rivers of origin, along with 15% of the water pumped. So we're going to spend considerable amounts to remove a pollutant, just to put it back in after, for the next treatment centre in the Haute de Seine or Evelyn to remove, and then put it back in. And on it goes to the people in the Eure, or Normandy, etc. It doesn't make any sense to do things that way. How can we ensure future food supplies while preserving water? 
Benoit Biteau has been working on this question since 2007. He inherited his father's farm, which for 35 years grew only conventionally irrigated maize. It used 300,000 cubic meters of water a year, equivalent to a year's worth of drinking water for a small town. Today, Benoit farms without pesticides or irrigation. I bought eight boreholes and five pumping stations that were used to irrigate 110 hectares of maize. I bought them to close them down and develop a more eco-friendly system. The former engineer has worked on GM crops, cloning and even sold pesticides. But 12 years ago, he adopted agroecology in a bid to protect resources. An elected MEP since 2019, he aims to make this type of agriculture a priority for people and society. To avoid irrigating this plot of land, I had to find alternatives. And the alternative to irrigation are trees. So every 28 metres, there's a dam that allows the water to flow vertically towards the water table. And that's done along the root system of the trees I've planted. And on the other hand, when there's a shortage of water, this root system connected to the water table will bring the water up to make it available for the crop. Here, we have two combined crops, rye to make bread or flour, and brown duckweed that grows at the foot of the rye. The plant itself acts like a pesticide, no light can get underneath. Green peas, spelt, wheat, buckwheat, oats. Nowadays, he grows 18 species of field crops and rears 130 animals on 200 hectares. People keep telling us that organic farming will affect food security. We're going to threaten food security, but with this crop and combining the two plant species, our yields are at least as big as conventional farming. To date, the only real solution for preventing water pollution by pesticides would be a radical, coordinated change in prevailing agricultural practices. A major social challenge given that France is one of the world's biggest consumers of pesticides.